Hello guys, um, so we are here for another video tutorial. Um, this, ti this time we will talk about the bolted connection between two beams uh, which are uh, welded to an end plate. Um, as you can see here I have two plates. They are bolted to each other using a an M20 bolt. Um, the bolt has the bolted connection ha actually has one nut and one fastener. Um, it's a very simple bolted uh, connection. It's not uh, very very difficult to to perform. Actually, we I use the bolted connection um, uh, the bolted connection uh, properties in uh, Autodesk Inventor, which is the program that I'm using. Uh, personally, I think that Autodesk Inventor uh, has a lot of uh, possibilities, a lot of properties to 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 assemble to our design, um, and that's uh, one of the reasons why I use the Autodesk program. You have other options. You can use SolidWorks uh, or even uh, SpaceClaim in um, in Ansys, but um, for me, this one is the most powerful one. So. Um, as you can see here, I have not uh, assembled uh, an, an welding an welding beam between uh, the beam and the, um, the plate because I'm going to simulate that in Nancy's uh, through um, a bonded connection. Okay, so now let's go to Nancy's. So, as you can see here, I have already performed my analysis, but I'm going to explain you uh, everything what you need to do to in order to perform this analysis. So I've imported my geometry uh, through space claim and, and then I opened it in mechanical which is um, the program in ANSYS that I'm going to use to perform this tr static structural analysis. Um, we have the same bodies that uh, I've created in Inventor. Uh, so let's go. Uh, the first thing that we have to assemble is the, the material. Okay, I've uh, performed uh, different different types of steel um, to different bodies um, so I have in the, in the beams I have a steel that I called steel A um, and uh, the flush plate as a steel B um, and then I've assembled steel A to every other uh, body in the, in the in our assembly uh, but what does this mean? What is steel A and steel B? Well, steel A and steel B are different types of steel uh, with different properties, with different yield stress, with different um, with, dif with different uh, hardenings, um, and the steel A has uh, a larger um, a larger uh, yield stress than uh, steel B. Okay, so it's more resistant. Um, but they are both nonlinear steel. It's very important. So we are performing a nonlinear analysis. Um, we have nonlinear materials, and we will see later that we also have nonlinear contacts. And actually, let's now go to contacts. So I don't have a lot of contacts in this analysis. Uh, I have bonded contacts between two bonded contacts actually between the beam and the plate and the other bonded contact it's between the, the the other beam and the other plate okay so then I have a frictional contact between the two beams the between the two plates I'm sorry and this is very important because of what we want to, because of what we are trying to simulate actually so the frictional contact between the two end plates is very important then I have frictionless contacts between each bolt and the hole wet or where it is inserted this uh, actually is happening in only in one uh, plate because the other one uh, waits. Let me check this. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I was telling the truth. Up. I only have frictional cont frictionless contacts uh, between the bolts and the plate in the second uh, plate uh, because uh, with the first plate I have a rough contact to try to simulate um, a little frictional contact between these these two bodies. Um, but th as in the second plate, I have uh, the nut um, and the and the fastener uh, restricting the movement of the bolt. I've assembled between the the bolt itself, uh, the, the bolt itself, itself, uh, and the um, and the plate. I've performed a frictionless contact. So then I have a frictional contact between the n the fastener and 
the the plate and uh, lastly I have uh, four, eight bonded contacts eight bonded contacts four with uh, between the nut and the fastener and the other four are between the nut and the bolt okay uh, so this is the the type of uh, contacts that I've established um, they have different uh, different properties but uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind is that we are only using um, solid materials so uh, in the behavior I've uh, established symmetric behavior because they are both solid uh, solid uh, material uh, solid elements in this case in every everybody in this in this analysis then I've also performed um, uh, a contact tool uh, you can see here that I have uh, some orange warnings but actually I know what these orange uh, warnings mean if you look closely to our nut you can see that the nut is too much uh, how can I say this too much uh, detailed you know we have too much details in this nut and this is due to the importment that I've done from inventor has I imported the geometry and inv uh, ANSYS imported the nut as it is designed on Inventor and the library of materials in Inventor um, is very very detailed and sometimes this isn't as good as it should be okay and you can h see here that I have some uh, curved surfaces uh, between the contacts and that's the reason why I have those orange warnings but as I know that this won't affect the, um, the analysis um, I'm gonna leave them as they are now and this uh, yellow um, these yellow warnings here are due uh, exactly to the um, to to the geometry because it's near opened but the we can perform the, um, the analysis actually I'm gonna show you where this is okay it's between this two bodies the bolt and the second plate but it isn't I'm not concerned about this okay so let's go now to our static structural settings so in order to perform this type of analysis and the main proposal of the analysis is to apply a force in opposite directions um, the actually the force F and the force G are pointing in different directions and we want to see the behavior of the of the um, of the connection okay um, so I've applied frictionless support in the top of the beams and in the in the bottom of the, the beams as well then I have one remote force pointing in minus Z direction and the other force is pointing in Z direction with the same magnitude this is very important I'm applying one magnetron and you may be asking what? one magnetron? yeah I know Th of course that the assembly won't resist but I want to show you with true scale how would the, the structure behave alright uh, then I've applied the fixed support in these edges here um, you can look here in, only in the edges okay because we want to let the the geometry uh, and the, the behavior of the of the of the plates be subjected to the forces that we are applying so we can only restrict those edges on the top and on the bottom of the of the of our assembly then of course that I've applied some bolt pretension which is very very low it's a very low pretension only five kilonewtons um, but it's uh, actually it is good for what I'm for what I'm for what I'm analyzing um, and then of course we have our solution so let's take a look in our solution so I have a total deformation of 17 millimeters with a true scale so this is um, the true scale uh, so it means that in reality this would be the tendency of our uh, for uh, test. Um, however, you know that I've applied one magnetron, and of course that we cannot look only to the deformations. We have to look at the stresses, and we have 2,000 megapascal with non-linear steel. Of course, that uh, 
the geometry wouldn't resist actually in this case the material wouldn't resist and in true scale you can see that our bolt is not uh, in the right position so it's curved you can see here that it has a radius of curvature and uh, of course that the tensions the, uh, actually the stresses in that zone are too high so you can see that 1000 uh, megapascal of course that it, it didn't resist uh, in the nut we have 600 um, in the head we have 500 even in the in the beam the beam wouldn't resist here it has 1000 megapascal so the welding wouldn't resist um, it's too much force but what I was trying to see was the deformation and you can see that we have a clear deformation of the two um, the two plates and actually this is very good um, it's very uh, important to uh, see um, how the structure would behave and when I apply let's say for example let's see half of the force that I've applied okay uh, so let me check here 1.55 okay let's retrieve this result you can see that with uh, a little bit more than 5,000 newtons kilonewtons I'm sorry 5,000 kilonewtons we only have um, okay so it hasn't uploaded the other total deformation but we have a very small deformation here we have just a little gap between the two uh, the two plates but I wanted to see the real deformation between this um, these two these two plates and you can look at the maximum stress it's 700 uh, megapascal so it's obviously an nonlinear analysis because it has exponential tendency after the the 500 um, 500,000 newtons 500 kilonewtons uh, and we have 500 new uh, megapascal here um, in the beams and in the welding, uh, okay, so maybe with 500 kilonewtons, the structure would still resist even uh, that it was entering in the failure zone, okay. Um, even in the plate, we have 300, yeah, the material of the plate resists to 300, so the plate would resist. Uh, let me check here, yeah, also this would resist. And. Uh, okay let's let's see the bolt inside okay so inside we have 500 almost 600 maybe it would resist yes the maximum stress it's there on that point 600 yeah the structure would still resist um okay so let's go to the final result okay uh, and uh, then I've performed uh, different types of results because I wanted to see the, um, the evolution of the stresses uh, and the equivalent elastic strain in the end um, but this is a very simple analysis that you can perform if you are wondering about the, time, the amount of time that it required to analysis uh, I can say that half an hour was enough for my computer um, actually uh, my computer has 32 gigabytes of RAM and 4 gigahertz of CPU um, so if you have um, few properties in your computer um, you may expect and you should expect a larger amount of time to uh, run and to solve this um, this analysis um, at the hundred percent but I can assure you that uh, it's a very simple analysis to do it, it is a simple uh, design to to design an inventor um, and it's very very easy to perform okay so uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video this short video actually uh, please give me some info about what you are uh, your opinion about our videos um, and give me suggestions about what you would like to see in our channel look forward to see you soon thank you very much